combat systems. I was looking on the internet the other day and I saw these two characters uh, saw their video on their self-defense and it was don't ever punch in a street fight. I'm like what the fuck? I said the, the punch is one of your main weapons and the reasoning behind it was that most people are gonna in a street fight if they see a punch coming they're gonna duck down. No that's not typically what they do. If you're, in a, if you're an experienced fighter and you see a punch coming, you're going to block it or, you know, duck out of the way. Nobody's going to go like that and take the chance on getting, if some big dude punched me in the head, number one, it only takes about eight pounds of pressure to fracture the human skull. And number two, I'm going to get not probably get knocked unconscious. He may or may not get a broken hand. So that is crap. And if you go to the video, they got like 11 million views, which is extremely respectable. But if you look at the two characters that are doing the video, probably neither one of them have ever been in a real street fight and probably couldn't, you know, fight their way out of a wet paper bag. So today we're going to go over, and because of that video, we're going to go over what I call the hammer punch or, or the combat punch. Now you have two different styles of punches. You have the boxing punch, which you know, you throw this way or you throw the jab that way. And that's, it's effective, but at the same time, it's, it's not, it's not really natural. If you hold, typically when you're in a boxing stance, you're holding your hands this way. So the natural way is if you shoot that hammer fist out, it's much easier. It's like a, it's just like a piston and it's tucked in, tucked right here in the pocket. It's, it's more difficult for, an opponent or an attacker to, to see if somebody's coming at me or I'm, you know, in the mix, I can just shoot that, you know, right cross out or shoot that jab out. We're in a combination and it's more natural than one because when you, when people have to turn their fist the other way in a regular boxing punch to get that right cross, you know, you, you, some people telegraph it. They come out too wide you know, where they, they cock back before they throw it and I'm just going to step in, boom, and, you know, give them a quick pop in the face. So here, it's coming right from the center, the center of the body. Same with the jab, boom, boom. You know, it's much more efficient than if you're throwing this way where somebody can step in and block and then, you know, throw another technique. So, again, you're going to need your, need something to practice on, whether it's a, a heavy bag, a hanging heavy bag or here we just stick them in the corner because it, it transmits if we're training at home it transmits too much energy through the rafters and and pisses everybody off pretty much so get yourself a bob out uh, if you haven't trained before uh, your knuckles uh, are in condition your hands are in condition you can go to walmart or dick sporting goods or sports authority and get yourself uh, a pair of, of uh, mma gloves or some um some boxing gloves um, because Bob is not like a human. His this is very rigid, and it'll just it'll rip the skin, you know, off your knuckles. If my kids don't train them for a while and they come down here and, and hit the bag, their their hands or their knuckles are bleeding, and uh, they're not as rough. Mine are my hands. My skin's like leather, pretty much. So again, you know, get your training dummy, and first thing you want to do. Make a nice tight fist as usual. And now just curl your fingers in all the way down and bring your thumb across. You know, if you have it too loose or you're hitting the wrong spot, you can end up breaking your fist and you also, the impact is not the same. So you want to make a nice tight knuckle. Um, as far as the technique goes, basically from here, you're just extending an arm out. If you're, if you're throwing the right cross, you're turning your entire body off. You're pivoting off your back foot and shooting all your energy through through the punch. See, if it's a jab, you're just you're, you're lunging forward with the punch. If it's a right cross, you're just turning your body, getting all your energy, pivoting off that back foot. You know, even if you're in a neutral stance, you can step forward and throw that punch either side, whether it's a right cross or a jab. You know, depending on the situation, you know, street fights typically last about 30 seconds and they're sloppy. It doesn't look like TV. It doesn't look like all those 
pretty moves in the karate school or these other mcdojos that you see you know it's downright you know fast furious and dirty so again what you're going to do is you know i'm right-handed so i just I, I actually i can punch and fight with both hands because i've been training that way for almost 32 years now so typically if you're left-handed you're going to have the right uh, your right hand is going to be your jab so you know you got your hands up and you're in the fight you're just going to step forward throw that punch throw what we call a hammer punch and same thing you're going to step pivot off the back foot throw the right cross and until you get familiar if you're a beginner you just want to take it slow step in you know work the angles see from here instead of if i was throwing a, a regular jab it's a little more uncomfortable if i'm throwing this way coming from the center you know to his ear if i'm off to the side you know if he has to punch like step step that way it's a lot harder for the opponent to see that coming than if it's a around if i was coming this way and going like this he's got more time if he's experienced to move out of the way so basically you just want to spend about 15 20 minutes a night practicing that punch make sure you have well, the, the bob's the best trainer out of all because it's, it's the closest thing to a, a human being so again you step in pivot and just you know when you first start training Take it slow. <clears throat> Step in, pivot, throw that punch. Then as time goes by, you know, start speeding it up. Throw that extra punch. That was three punches in, <clears throat> in pretty much a split second. And you just want to work, work around the bag. You know. And so you get really comfortable with that punch. And once you get your speed, your power down, that is super, super effective in a street fight. Even if somebody comes in, throws that crazy haymaker punch at you, you can step in, block, pivot, you know, or he throws that haymaker, you step in, block, you take another step, throw that punch, and it's just the energy you create coming in with that punch is bone shattering. He's definitely gonna go down have a broken nose if you hit around the the eye area you're definitely going to shatter those bones split his head open if you punch you know here to the ear for those experienced martial artists getting hit in the ear is a, probably one of the more other than getting hit in the balls is one of the more unpleasant experiences so that whole thing about do not throw a punch in a street fight is 100% fucking bullshit. And it's people in this industry to put crap out there like that that really pisses me off. In fact, I wish they were here right now so I could give them some free martial arts lessons. And again, these techniques are for self-defense purposes only, right? Yeah, we need to say that for liability purposes. Anyway, another thing you can do while we're on the whole subject of the, the hammer fist is you can use it in the opposite way. Instead of punching forward, now we can step in and use it similar to a back fist. The back fist is, is knuckle fir knuckles first. This, no matter what you hit with this, you're not gonna feel the pain that you would with knuckles first on any kind of punch. So you can step in the same way. I can step in, you know, if he's coming in, I can step in and throw that punch like this and that's just like swinging a baseball bat if i'm coming back from here you know he's going down or he's going to be extremely stunned and you can follow it up with the palm strike that we did in the previous video where you can step in throw the strike you can even bring it down you know depending on the situation right into the uh into the collarbone it doesn't take a whole lot of uh pressure to fracture that uh, collarbone or even cause extreme pain. If you fracture that collarbone on either side, his arm's just gonna go limp and the fight's over. Or you can continue to destroy him, you know, whatever the case is. And like I said before, street fights, they typically only last 30 seconds on average and they're 
and they're sloppy. You know, especially if you've got two people that are inexperienced. Um, if you've got one person like myself who's extremely experienced and another person that's been running his mouth and who's not experienced, he's going to the hospital, plain and simple. So again, you know, just practice your punches, take it slow, step in, go to the jab, and add that right cross, work it, switch stance, switch stance again, switch stance, and there you have it, that's the hammer punch. If you have any questions, you can contact us through our main website, www.streetcombatsystems.com. Um, our phone number is on there, email address. We have different products that you may or may not be interested in. And any of our local uh, viewers here in Maryland, uh, we're in the process of uh, trying to open a local uh, martial arts school here in uh, Carroll County. We were actually get to train and learn real techniques that work in the street. Be dressed like this, wearing tennis shoes, street clothes, no karate pajamas, no belts, none of that bullshit. Anyway, till the next video, train hard.